Hi, it's Pavel with another C++ homework and today we'll be calculating distance traveled. This is an exercise from chapter 5, uh, exercise 6 from the book uh, starting out with C++ from control structures through objects. Alright, so uh, what do we do? We, uh, other than calculating the distance, which uh, we are provided a formula for, uh, we are supposed to write uh, a program that asks the user for the speed of a vehicle and how many hours it has traveled. And then we should use a loop to display the distance the vehicle traveled for each hour of the time. So if user enters, let's say, travel of three hours, we'll display how, much, uh, how many miles uh, it traveled in one hour, in two hours, and in three hours. All right, let's get to do it. Uh, and what we need is we'll need the uh, distance, which is going to be the result of our formula. We'll need the speed, and we'll need the uh, time. I'll do time as integer in uh, whole hours. You know, you could do float, I guess. You know, for if you wanted like uh, 1.5 hours, for example. But I'll just do uh, whole numbers. All right, anyway, C out, uh, we'll ask for the input. What uh, is the speed of the vehicle? And we will, of course, get the speed okay, into a variable. And um, now, we could check, you know, if this, you know what, let's do it. Let's check if the uh, speed is correct, like, you know, not less than zero. Uh, just a quick, uh, quick check. Not necessary for this particular uh, exercise, but, you know, a little input check is always uh, good to do. So, see out. So, if the speed entered was zero, or I mean uh, zero or less, then we will keep asking user for uh, for the input until he enters uh, a correct answer or a correct input. So speed must be greater than zero. Uh, you know what? Please, please enter speed again. And so we will ask for the input again, and we will store it. And this will loop until our speed is greater than zero. Now let's ask for the hours. It's a, it's a similar thing. See out how many, how many hours did it travel? And we'll store that in our in our uh, time. And again, you know, time should be greater than one, or at least uh, greater than zero. But in in our case, greater than one because I mean, uh, I have only integers as time, so I'll I'll make it uh, greater than one. So while Time is less than one. In other words, if user entered time that is less than one, I will ask him for. I will inform him about it and ask him about new uh, entering uh, the time again. So time must be greater than zero. Please enter time again. And we will store it in our time. So this is just a quick, like I said, a quick uh, input check. Doesn't really check it, but you know, if the user enters a string, then the whole program will bomb anyway. So, but you know, just a little input check. All right. So now uh, we need to output everything. Uh, 
in a loop and display each uh, uh, distance traveled for each hour. So uh, I'm going to do a little see out to kind of simulate it like a table. Actually, so this way. So see out. Uh, I'll start a new line. And so it's going to be an hour, like a column for hour, then a tab. And then uh, uh, distance tra distance uh, traveled. All right. And after that, another new line. And uh, so this will be an hour, a column for an hour. It will be like one, then two, then three, and then distance traveled in that hour. Uh, so. So it's just like a little header for the table. Uh, so I'll do also this. Uh, it's probably too many. All right. A little underline. And let's do the calculation itself. So for integer i equals 1, because uh, I started 1 for the first hour, and uh, i is less than an e or equal to time. That's what, that's the time travel that the user entered, and i plus plus. And, of course, we cal calculate the distance, so there are distance, distance equals speed, uh, times i. Why i? Because i is the time. It, that's why I did it in, in uh, integers. So I can use, I start with 1 and then uh, I can loop through it and each iteration automatically increases so the next time it will be 2, so it's gonna be an hour 2, then next time hour 3 and so forth. All right, so uh, and for each one, we'll output uh, we'll output the hour, which is i, which is going to be under this column over here under hours, and then we need the tab because there's a tab over here, and uh, you know since this is like a long long word, so that does distance travel. Uh, I'll do another tab that should kind of center it. At least a little bit. Uh, we'll see how it looks, and then I'll adjust it up. Uh, distance, so hour, and then distance, and then end of line. Okay. I think that's all. Uh, there really, shouldn't be anything else. Let's see how it works, or if it works. Which it does not, because. <laughs> I can believe this and uh, see how it, I use these just like seeing. All right, let's try again. All right, so we got uh, what is the speed of a vehicle? Let's do just three, uh, 30 miles per hour. How many hours travel? Let's say three. And here's our table so hour one, two, and three, and distance travel. 30, 60, and 90. So it's actually quite centered after all. And uh, maybe I can use. I'm just being picky, but you know. Uh, so let's see if it works with uh, if I enter what's the speed of a vehicle. If I enter negative 5, for example, speed must be greater than 0. So what if I enter another negative number? It tells me. It has to be greater than zero and try it again. So I'll 100 miles an hour. How many hours travel? Let's say zero. That should tell me that it cannot be. It must be greater than zero. Try again. So I do the wrong number again. And see, it would loop until I will enter a correct number. So let's say 10 hours. So here is our table 120, 200, 300, and so forth, all the way to 1000. 
So, again, what do we do? We ask for the input of the speed. We make sure it's greater than or equal to zero. I mean, it should be it should be just greater than zero. I mean, if it's zero, you don't go anywhere. But whatever. We do the same with the time, except this time it will have to be greater than one. Like for the hour one, we output our uh, header for the table, and then we did the loop. We looped as many times as the user entered time. In other words, if user entered 10 hours, we looped 10 times. We started from 1 all the way to 10. And uh, each loop was 1 hour. So all we, we needed to do is multiply the speed that the user entered with the ever-increasing uh, i, which started at 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, and so forth. And then we output it immediately into the line of our little table, like a little raw of a table then move to the next line, did another loop, I'll put another row, and so forth. All right, so uh, here you have it. Hope it helped you, and I will see you next time. Take care.